What's going on guys and welcome back to the channel for another FM22 rebuild. This is the series where we take a club who has a little bit of a history and return them to the top of the tree, top of the pile in whatever country they are in. We haven't actually been in Germany for a long, long time. So I thought we'd return to Germany to see what we can do. It's one of my favourite leagues in FM22 or to be honest in Football Manager. The registration rules are basically non-existent you can sign anybody you like you also get a lot a lot of tv money so your transfer budgets are always massive so today we are going to take control of hertha berlin we're going to try and turn the tide turn the capital of the footballing world in germany to berlin we're going to try and take it away from munich and see what can happen um obviously this is a rebuild anything can happen in this five year time period but if you do like the rebuilds guys drop a like on it down below it really does help out get Getting into that YouTube algorithm but without any further ado let's dive in let's take a look at Hertha Berlin so first and foremost we're going to look at the history of the club so you can kind of get a little bit of a flavor as to what we are going to try and achieve they are two-time Bundesliga champions but not for a long long time winning it in 1930 and 1931 uh, not the best there they are the Bundesliga two champions more recently in uh, 2013 um, we're going to try and stabilize them in that Bundesliga and try and push on into those Champions League spots. And ultimately, the goal is to win uh, the Bundesliga at the very least with this Hertha Berlin team and take them from where they are now into a very, very good spot. As you can see in the last uh, last season, 2020-2021 season, they did finish in 14th. A uh, season before, finished in 10th, but they've only finished as high as 6th in the past 10 years. Uh, so a lot of work to do with Hertha Berlin. Um, a very, very nice club, though. If we go on here, they've got great training, for, uh, sorry, great youth facilities, excellent training facilities again absolutely fantastic they've got some interesting players i must admit um and obviously that olympus stadion in berlin is a fantastic stadium um in terms of their media prediction predicted 10th it's just not good is it um in terms of the competitions that we are in we are only in two this season especially the first season bundesliga and the DFB Pokal, the German Cup. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see what we can do in there. If we click on the Bundesliga and we click on that season preview, um, we are predicted, media prediction of uh, fifth, uh, 25 to 1 to win the division, which I don't think is likely. And look how packed that uh, media Dream 11 is. It is 10 Bayern Munich players and just the one from Dortmund, which is Guerrero at the left back spot. Very, very interesting though. Obviously, the, the kind of clubs that you would expect at the top of the league, uh, Bayern, Dortmund, uh, Leverkusen and Leipzig. I Usually in these, Leverkusen kind of do drop away, but we will see. We will see what happens. Um, in terms of the tactic that we are using today, we are using the GYRFM Nice to Meet You. It's a recent one out on the, ta uh, on the channel. So I kind of wanted to give it a proper test drive of my own, take it for a spin for five years and see how it gets on. The thumbnails on the screen right now, please do go and check out this tactic. It is very good. Um, but I, as I said, I wanted to, really get into it and use it myself for a, for an extended period of time so this is what we're doing here um if this is the tactic it's a it's a 532 um so if i quick pick without restriction the best 11 this is where we're looking guys but something you will notice in terms of our best 11 three of them are out on loan uh, Christoph Piatek is gone uh, on loan, Zifuk's gone on loan, and Alderete is also out on loan. So three of our best 11 players at the club are out on loan for the season. So we're going to have to do some work. And I'm not overly convinced because also we've got uh, three other players here in our uh, in our in our lineup that that just aren't that are out on loan as well. So I don't understand what Hertha have done this season to get themselves in this particular position. Um, we're pretty strong defensively. I'm quite happy with where we are there. But sort of going forward, I think Stefan Jovetic, not really the best option for the club. Uh, 31 years of age. He does have nice attributes, I guess. And he can play that deep line forward. Um, but as a number one scoring option, definitely not that guy. Um, I did go out and spend some money in this first transfer window. Obviously, there's a lot of business done here already. Um, but the two bits of business that I've done, I've gone out and signed Augustine Alvarez Martinez uh, from Penarol. He is a Uruguayan international, one cat, one goal for his country. Um, nice little stats. Also, five-star potential. He's only 20 years of age. So I'm thinking he can come in and kind of be the main man to play alongside Jovetic. We don't really have any other huge options, obviously, with Piatek being out on loan. So I'm thinking he can come in and really be a good player for us. 16 finishing, 15 heading. Good technique as well. Uh, nice balanced personality. Um, 
I think I think he's okay. He's not he's not overly expensive. We paid six million pounds for his services to Penarol, one of the better teams in Uruguay. Um, so hoping he can do a little bit of business for us there. I've also been intrigued to pick up this guy, uh, Strahin, Strahinja uh, Pavlovic. Um, now, this guy's been mentioned a lot in my rebuilding Red Star save. He starts, to see, uh, starts it at Monaco. He's a former partisan player, um, but has good potential. 20 years old uh, again, uh, nine caps and one goal for Serbia. Obviously, Ser full Serbian international valued it now uh, 7.6 to 10 million pounds. Um, he's big, chap. He's big, guys. Um, six, point, uh, six foot four, 16 jumping reach. He's, he's, he's a big don. Uh, and we paid a decent amount of money for him, 7.25 million pounds to Monaco uh, to secure ourselves another big defender. If we go into the tactic though and quick pick on the players that can actually play, this is how we're looking for the season. I'm not overly convinced on the keeper. Uh, this is one that I will be trying to uh, blood through. Uh, Martin Dardai, uh, or Dardai. Um, I think he could be a very, very good player for us. Super well-rounded. Four and a half star potential ability. 19 years of age. I think he could be a mainstay in this team moving forward. Um, but yeah, this is kind of where we're at, guys. This is the team. A uh, little bit lacking in these wing back spots, complete wing back, not necessarily roles that you see a huge amount. Obviously, we do have the two competitions in terms of the club vision and the expectation. Let me expand that before we get into it. They are building us a new stadium, which is nice um, over the five years. I mean, the Olympus Stadion's huge, but I assume they're renting it. Um, this season, they want us to qualify for the Champions League and reach the semi-finals of the German Cup. And then after that, be recognized as the best of the rest. They kind of signify that... Bayern are going to be very, very difficult to overcome in the Bundesliga. But that is season one. Let's simulate the year and see how we get on. So it's the end of the first season and this is the competition screen. We finished third in the Bundesliga, which I'm actually really, really happy with. However, the gap between ourselves and the team that won it, which was actually Dortmund this time out, uh, is quite large. 25 points between us and Dortmund. They only lost once all season. Um... Home to Bayern Leverkusen. Interesting. Amazing rest of the season, though. Plus 70 in terms of that goal difference. Dortmund obviously doing something very, very good. Um, so we've been up into third. Uh, Stuttgart complete the top four. Leipzig, very disappointed for them. Knocked out in the quarterfinals of the German Cup by Bayern Munich. 3-1 relatively comprehensive isn't it Bayern are that that team in Germany really um, I'm surprised that Dortmund have absolutely cakewalked the league but as you can see Augustine Alvarez Martinez 12 goals for us in that uh, Bundesliga so obviously returning a decent amount on his investment 12 goals for assists over 34 games he's developed a little bit as well so I think he's a nice little player for us could go a long long way at, uh, you know leading the line for the club um other than that, though, the gap to these two, I don't know how we're going to try and bridge that. If we go on to um, the, the the team stats and everything, Erling Haaland is a problem in this division. And I'm hoping someone quickly comes in and buys him 38 goals for Erling Haaland this season. It's a lot. Uh, so he scored 38. And in, in all of our games, how many did we score? 46. So Haaland, eight goals behind us as an entire team, uh, goes to show the problems that we are having. We need to get some better strikers into the club. As I said, Jovetic, not really the man. Um, we're going to have a couple of players coming back from loan, which will feel like new sign-ins, but still plenty of work to do. Because we are in the Champions League, though, we do get a hefty budget. This is Germany. That is kind of what happens. 65 and a half million in this at the end of this first season to go in and spend some cash. And I'm really looking forward to doing so. Also, the wage budget is almost doubled, um, so we're going to have some good fun going out there and signing some players to take this team to the next level. In terms of the club vision and everything, they were pretty pleased with where I landed, so um, I guess we just build on things for season number two. Transfer update coming up next. So then, guys, transfer update for season number two. We've had a few outgoings. Uh, Lowen and Belfoldil uh, have gone out uh, on, on full-time deals, 1.5 million and 1.3 million, recouping 2.8. It's not really uh, what, we're, what we're in the game for, but on the other side of the coin, we've spent 146 million. Now, obviously, a lot of this is in installments, but I think we've done really, really good business here. Um, in On terms of the free transfers, uh, Florian Grilltisch comes in on a free transfer. He was being released by Hoffenheim. And I don't understand why. I thought he was so well-rounded in a number of his attributes. Um, he's almost got double digits for everything, minus determination and long throws. So I think this is the kind of guy I want in my central midfield spots. I have no idea why he was being released by Hoffenheim. 
we swooped in. We got him. We got the job done on a free transfer. Bubakar Kamara comes in as well um, to play as a centre-back. I will not be playing him as a defensive midfielder. Um, physically, again, fantastic. Mentally, very, very nice. And pretty good in terms of his technicals for his age. He's 22 years of age. Comes in on a free transfer. He's now valued at 74 to £95 million pounds is Bubakar Kamara. So a good bit of business there. We also went out and spent some money on Hamburg's uh, fullback option, Joshua uh, Vajraman. Is how I'm going to say this dude's name. Um, he's fantastic, actually. Can play on both sides. Has the potential to be a four and a half star player. 21 years of age. German under 21 international. Um, uh, it's mainly the cover that I like. The fact that he can play on both sides. We probably will look in the future for a bit more of a specialist in both of those positions. And then use uh, Wagnerman as our sort of cover option. But first stage of the process, he is very, very good. And obviously offers that, us that flexibility of being able to play on both sides. The bulk of the cash has gone to uh, Real Sociedad for the services of Alexander Isaac. Um, I've, I've, I've been reading the comments and you guys have been saying, Steve, you always sign the same sorts of players. So I'm trying to do something a bit different this time around. We don't always sign Alexander Isaac. So I think he's relatively hit and miss, but... I fancied him this time. I think I think he's good. I think his first season with Sociedad was underwhelming, shall we say. Um, so I think I can really get the better out of him. He's obviously performing well, but he's just not scoring the goals in La Liga. We paid 70 million for him. Um, a lot of it is in installments, but I'm hoping he can take us to the next level in terms of our strikers. We've also signed the Russian Zarkarian. I think whilst he is a central attacker midfielder and this formation doesn't have a central attacker midfielder, I think I'm going to plop him in at central midfield to uh, to basically be that centre midfielder on attack. I think he can really do this job, has the, has the creativity to be a real force in that role. He is a wonder kid as well. Uh, we spent, how much money? 12 million uh, to Dinamo Moscow for uh, Zakarian services and I think he could be a good option for us moving forward. And then the final player, Rian 8 Nori. Uh, we sp spent some cash on him, getting him away from Wolves. Um, coming in as an important player to play on that left fullback position. We obviously get Zifuk back on loan uh, from his loan for this season as well to challenge it right back. So definitely uh, stocking up in those options there. 55 million we paid uh, Wolves for him. Now this is overpaid. I know I've overpaid. Left wing back is a very tricky position. There were a couple of players I was interested in and settled on eight Nori. Um, I think he can develop. I think he can come and be a better player. Obviously, four and a half star potential. It's mainly his creativity that I'm looking for. Good crossing, good dribbling. <clears throat> I definitely overpaid for this, didn't I? Let me know in the comments how much you think I overpaid for this, but we can try. We can see what <laughs> we can see how the season goes. I'm um, in terms of our tactic and what we're playing. This is how we're looking now. We've brought in the extra reinforcements. This is our best eleven. As things stand, so Schwolo in goal, Bubakar Kamara comes in, Nicholas Stark, Omar Alderete is back from his loan. I think he was at uh, Valencia. Wagnerman comes in at right back, Riane Nori comes in at left back. Um, uh, Stuart Söder uh, is alongside Grilturch and Darida in the midfield. This is my best 11. This is probably not what I'm going to play. And then Alvarez, Martinez and Alexander Isaac up front. So we definitely have improved this team all across the pitch. Um, I'm still not fully convinced on this goalkeeper just yet. I don't like his 11 positioning. Um, I think we could probably do a little bit better. He's a little bit on the older side as well. So we probably will look at replacing him at some stage. Um, but I feel a lot more comfortable with this team. I think defensively we are going to be fantastic in Season 2. And I'm hoping the ability of Isaac up top will really, really help us score a few more goals. Um, in terms of the competition, so because we finished in the top three, we do end up in the Champions League. We go into the group stages. So that's going to be some nice extra revenue for us. And obviously we do have the DFB Pokal and the Bundesliga. If we go into the season preview, um, you can see we are now ranked as the third best team. But there has been some big news. There has been some big transfers uh, going out because I believe Erling Haaland has been sold. Um, yes, he has. He's gone to Chelsea in this particular game for £91 million. Um, absolutely ridiculous. They've bought in, obviously, Sula is uh, already pre-arranged, but Marcus Turan, Fabio Vereira, they've definitely brought in some interesting options of Dortmund, but losing Haaland is a big, big thing. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see if they can maintain their performance and dominate the division, or do they drop off and it goes back into the hands of Bayern Munich? We're 
quite far away from winning the division yet, I think. But a couple more years in the Champions League, you never really know. Hopefully, we get a good group in that and maybe we can progress into the knockout stages of that competition. I'll see you at the end of the year. So this is the end of the second season in this particular rebuild and we did finish again inside that top four in Germany. However, we did finish fourth. RB Leipzig came out of nowhere really um, and sort of closed the gap on uh, the teams at the top, um, which is a lot tighter this year. Bayern do reclaim that title, uh, 74 points for them, a lot less than uh, Dortmund had last season. Dortmund on 71, Leipzig on 71 and then ourselves on 63. We are very much in that gap between not the elite level teams in Germany but also better than everybody else as you can see uh, with the gap between ourselves in Wolfsburg who are the team in fifth disappointingly not out in the third round of the German Cup uh, by Hoffenheim uh, but we did make it to the quarter final stages of the Champions League where we were ultimately knocked out by Chelsea Chelsea getting the job done 2-0 um, there uh, Mason Mount and Erling Haaland with the goals for Chelsea um, I quite like this shape we may look at replicating this i quite <laughs> i quite like it i think it, it works quite well um so they go on to the champions league and obviously it looks like uh, i can see up here the holders of bayern munich so it looks like bayern have uh, maintained the champions league uh, oh, the final's not happened. It is Bayern versus Man City. Bayern did win it last season. Of course they did. Um, so in terms of the season, I think we've done really, really well. Um, uh, let's have a look at the group stage, shall we? Group E we were in. So we were in a group with Manchester United, Ajax and Club Bruges. We are top of the tree there. Four victories, two draws. Two draw, <laughs> draw against Manchester United twice. Um, but we, we're, in, we're in good shape. I'm happy with how this season's panned out. Yeah, okay, we lost a little bit of ground in the league. But the performance in the Champions League and stuff, is very very nice getting to the quarterfinal stage regardless of losing is huge um again it's all about improving that reputation and spending that money wisely and speaking of money 73.3 million pounds to go this time 101 million in the overall balance it is time guys to go out and spend that cash obviously 1.6 million in the wage budget we're currently spending 9 point, uh, 961k uh, so we've got a lot of wiggle room in the wage budget and we've got 73 million pounds to spend let's get to spending it and spend it we did going into season number three here is the transfers ins and outs and we've had a couple of outs as well Lucas Dressart is one of the ones that's gone Alexander Schwolo the goalkeeper he has gone as well to CSK in Moscow but you'll see why that has happened in a second in terms of the money uh, spent we brought in a Nico Fagu Fig uh, Fagi Fagioli um, from Juventus on a free transfer again another really well-rounded midfielder that I I don't think gets enough props I'm complaining any of the three spots in the central midfield so i'm really really happy to bring him in especially on a free transfer raspadori is a player that we have signed previously in a rebuild but we don't sign him all the time so um i see you comment section we've signed him up front to play alongside alexander isaac i think they are the best two options moving forward spent 31 and a half million pounds on him bringing him in from sassuolo this is a player i really wish i could sign in my um red star save uh ivan Illich fantastic fantastic creative force brilliant serbian as you can tell mentally fantastic as well really really nice and well-rounded physically and brilliant technically he is already classed as a world-class midfielder and has fantastic traits i think he is going to be the driving force in our central midfield so i'm really really looking forward to bringing him in um in terms of that goalkeeper we've gone out and signed uh bayon bayon there that's how i'm going to say this guy's name i think he's a very good goalkeeper from turkey he's coming from fenerbahce has been relatively okay uh for them 7.26 last season 13 clean sheets in the last two years so again it's a pretty solid return 17 17.75 million pounds paid for him i think he is an upgraded goalkeeper he's got 18 one on one 17 reflexes great it uh catching the ball in the air six foot six as well so i think he is a very good upgrade in terms of goalkeeper and i still had some money to spend so i went out and signed suonsu uh, from leicester city i was looking at fofana they wanted too much money for him so i settled on their second option of uh the turkish international we paid a lot of cash for him uh 44 and a half million which could go up to 55 million i believe that's in a clause if we win the bundesliga so if that does happen it could go up but i think obviously everyone knows about this guy he is a beast at the back and i'm hoping um that extra that extra sort of added ability in the in the defensive lineup will really make a difference in terms of picking our best 11 
this is how we're looking now. Um, so we've got the goalkeeper in goal, uh, Badenia or Altai, as he's listed on the team sheet. Kamara, Soyonsu, Pavlovic, Vagnerman, Aitnori, Zakarian, Grilic, Illich, Isaac, Raspadori. This is the time. This is the time we push forward and really try and get our uh, stake our claim on that Bundesliga. In the in terms of the competitions, same three again. Um, pretty much as expected. We are expected to qualify for the Champions League at the Bundesliga, reach the first knockout round of the Champions League. So they want us to get through the group stages and the semi-finals of the German Cup, which we've been very, very disappointing in so far. In terms of the odds, I know you guys like looking at the season odds. Uh, 15 to 1, so we've closed the gap a little bit, but it is still buying to throw away according to the bookies. Let's see you at the end of the season. Season number three is in the books then, and we again have finished inside that top four, but we're still fourth. It's, it's rather disappointing. Dortmund reclaim the league. It's them and them and Bayern having that, that fist fight at the top, and we are nowhere near it. Um, we are 12 points ahead, uh, behind Dortmund, sorry, and Leipzig finish off in third, uh, beating us on goal difference. I think our problem is scoring goals, guys. For some reason, we need to, we really need to up it. In that DFB Pokal, knocked out in the semi-finals this time is where we were expected to get, but we're knocked out in the semis by Bayern Munich. 3-2 in extra time. They're sort of flexing their abilities there, but the group stage really really poor guys knocked out in the group stage of that we were in a group with arsenal real madrid and dinamo uh, zagreb and we didn't even drop into the europa league zagreb beat us i think on the last day uh, the last match day if i remember from when this was simulating through uh, oh, sorry, they beat us in the penultimate match day, which meant that they jumped above us, and then we lost to Real Madrid on the final match day. So this is our most disappointing season, actually, despite spending a huge amount of cash. Uh, really, really disappointing season for us. We did finish inside that top four again by 10 points, but not really the performance we want. Um, in terms of the finances going into season number four, this is our biggest uh, transfer budget ever, almost £90 million, so let's get to spending it. Sorry guys, there were two players that I needed to remind you that we did sign uh, last um, last January. We also signed a Frabotta from Bochum for £5.5 million as a cover for left back. And we also signed Ibrahima Kanate from Liverpool for £70 million. Now we brought in Kanate for the main reason is that Bubakar Kamara departed for Manchester United. £46 million. I got bullied into taking £46 million for him uh, in the January. So we had to replace him with Kanate um, and put some of our own money to it. I'm not fully impressed with the fact that Kamara did want to go to Manchester United so much and played up a big big fuss about it um so that happened towards the end of last season which I completely forgot to update you guys on this season though we have been out in the transfer market three free transfers that we have signed though Stefano Senzi comes in a uh, nice Italian, very well-rounded, creative, not very the, not the most agile, but I don't need him to be. I need him to be creative. I need him to unlock defences. Uh, we've also brought in Anthony Martial on a free transfer, I think, as a striker option. He wanted to come in as a squad player, so I'm really, really happy with that. In this match engine, Martial can be a problem. Good agility, good pace, good finishing, good on the ball, good first touch, 15 composure. Martial can still do it in this match engine. I'm sure he can. Emre Chan was also uh, listed on a free transfer coming out of Dortmund. Obviously, he wasn't playing enough uh, for Dortmund. And I think he's a brilliant option for us as a ball winner. Actually being able to turn the play over, get us going again. He can also pass 16 passing, great technique, fantastic mentals, elite level physicals. Um, and he's now capped by Germany for 60 times. So for him to get him in on a free transfer, I think... Mwah, chef's gets good bit of business. Um, Juan uh, Couto comes in as a fullback option. He's a, a three and a half star complete wing back. So that's what I need him to be. Comes in from Manchester City. He spent a couple of seasons out on loan at Braga and Monterey respectively. Uh, nice and well-rounded. He's definitely better on the attacking side than he is on the defending side. But that is what I need for this spot. As you can see, looking at the comparison, he is an upgrade on Wagnerman who we did say at the start uh, start of this rebuild was going to come down as a sort of utility option, can play on both sides. I think he's a good, good squad player for us. But the bulk of the cash, big Tammy. Tammy Abraham comes in from Roma. He was, he was upset. He wanted to leave Roma for a club in the Champions League. We are a club in the Champions League and we have money burning a hole in our pocket. Tammy's physicals are next level. He's six foot five, 15 pace, great acceleration agility, 17 jumping reach, 16 heading. This guy's going to be a bags man for us. I can, I can already tell. I can already tell. His time at Romo is actually pretty good. 
uh, from memory. 19, 20, and 19 goals is a very, very good goal return for Tammy. And I'm hoping he can kind of do that on transition to the Bundesliga. Um, so, in terms of our tactic, we're looking strong now, guys. We I thought we looked strong last season, but now we look really strong. In terms of the team, this is how we're looking. I'll tie in goals. Sionsu, Kamate, Pavlovich um, have got a nice relationship as those defensive three. Uh, Kuto and Aitnori as the fullbacks, or wingbacks, shall I say. Figu Figuoli, uh, Chan and Illich as the three in midfield. And Alexander Isaac and Tammy Abraham up front. I'm hoping these guys can really propel us onto the next step. Um, in terms of the competition, same three again. Champions League group stage and the Bundesliga and the German Cup. Again, been pretty disappointed in that German Cup. Um, in terms of the season preview, this is where we're sat 10 to 1 now. We really have closed that gap. We were 50 to 1 at the start. We're closing the gap, but we still don't have any players in that media dream 11, despite spending heaps and heaps and heaps of cash. Um, but we will continue to try. Maybe season number four is our season. A vast improvement has happened in the league. We are now up into second and Bayern Munich beat us to the title by one point. And Tammy Abraham, top goal scorer for us in the competition. 17 goals for Tammy, highest average rating. He really is a problem. Now the match engine has updated with the winter update and ultimately the second winter update, which I think makes him, I don't know, it makes him even better. Um, 77 points for us, as I said, beaten uh, to the title by one point by Bayern. We pushed them close. We also had Dortmund on our tail as well and then the gap between us top three and Leipzig in fourth again quite big uh, seems to be a regular occurrence in this quarterfinals of the German Cup knocked out uh, by Mushin Gladbach I don't know what happened in the Champions League obviously we're out we go through in the group stage we are in a group with Porto Slavia Prague and Ajax go through in second mm, not the best not the worst there then we go into the knockout stages first knockout round we beat Manchester City uh, twice very very interesting and then we take on Liverpool and <sighs> Liverpool doing Liverpool things Sadio Mane Hatre Adiemi Mo Salah Fabinho yeah it's pretty comprehensive at Anfield isn't it is what it is when you come up against some of these English teams in the Champions League um, but vast vast improvement uh, for season number four going into season number five I'm happy with everything and how we've progressed the team is looking good the dynamic is looking good um, and we're looking up that's the main thing we're looking up we're one point behind Bayern who obviously are very very good um, Champions League final between Liverpool and Barcelona so Dortmund winning the Champions League let's go boys fair play we've got one season more to go um, and in terms of that cash and how much we've got 45 and a half obviously these installments have caught up with me somewhat but let's go out and spend it so guys we are back for our fifth and final season but before we get into things i just want to say thank you to all you guys who are still here on the video still watching please let me know down in the description in the comment section not the description let me know down in the comment section that you are still here by saying berlin over munich i'm really intrigued to see how you guys how many of you guys are still here at this point but please do let me know saying berlin over munich anyway transfer update for season number five we've had a couple of outgoings as well glotish has gone he has left us anthony martial has gone to leipzig augustine alvarez martinez my first signing of this rebuild he has gone uh, to almera for two and a half million so 19.25 million back into the coffers we spent cash though we have spent some cash um so we've brought in three new gens actually but yeah <laughs> unique to this save uh, that's the main thing alejandro pellegrino uh comes into the team from argentina from racing club over in argentina 18 years of age great already i think um yeah he's five foot five don't care he's a creative force that can be in that midfield Five star potential is what we're buying him for. I think he's one for the future, but I'm interested to see how he does develop over the course of the season. Good on both feet. Has all the attributes that I need him to have. Let's see how he develops over the course of the season. But one for the first team right here, right now. Ang Angelo Braghi Braghiani. He is a 18-year-old goalkeeper coming out of Lazio. He's already been playing for Lazio in the Serie So now is the time that we bring him to our team. Yes, okay, he needs a little bit of work. But he is going to be my first team goalkeeper. Four and a half star potential valued at 80 to 95 million pounds. Um, we paid Lazio a pretty penny for him. Yes, okay, some of it is in installments again. 65 million pounds for him. 
Um, and as you can see, he's had a good couple of years at Lazio, to be perfectly honest. They've been playing him pretty early doors. 36 appearances for them uh, two seasons ago and then 14 the season previous with a 7.39 rating is definitely not to be sniffed at for someone who is just 18 years of age. Yes, we paid a lot. I think he would, in theory, if I were to play the save longer than five years, this guy's the main man in my opinion in my opinion italians always produce good goalkeepers don't they and we've also spent 51 could go up to 61 million pounds on jose antonio gomez from atleti um again as you can see from this guy he is a elite level player or will be i don't understand why my coaches think he's only a four-star potential i think looking at his attributes he is probably almost at that level already 20 years of age been capped by the uh, spanish under 21 i think he's probably not a starter for us just yet but in a season or two he could be a real, real force again, has all the attributes to be really good and has a fairly determined personality and high determination. So I think that development will carry on for another season or two. Um, so he has that time to bed into our first team. In terms of everything, though, speaking of the first team, this is the first team without restriction. This is our best 11. Uh, let's pop that here. So we're not going to do that. We're going to play the youngster. Uh, Bagiani is going to start in goal. Siansu Konate Daradai is still here. He's probably one of the only originals from the from the original Hertha squad that is still here. Hence why he's on the thumbnail. Uh, so he is still knocking about at the club. Jean Couto, Riane, Nori, who's injured again. Uh, Figioli, Emre Chan, Illich, Isaac, Tammy Abraham. This is our year. This is our year to win the Bundesliga, boys. I can feel it. Uh, we got the same three competitions. Champions League group stages. Obviously, German Cup and that Bundesliga. Um, Bayern and Dortmund have been battling out, changing season on season, but we've been pushed back out to 20 to 1. So I don't th don't know what they think's happened here, but I think we can really, really push Bayern close this year. And um, we've finally got a player inside that Media Dream 11. Tammy Abraham does go in to that Media Dream 11 as the star striker for the division, which is really, really nice to see because I think scoring has been a little bit of a issue for us. Um, this is the state of the play. The Bundesliga is now the third most reputable league in Europe as well, going into season number five. So let's see what can happen. Can this be our year? So I think this is our best season so far, our best points return, but still beaten to that Bundesliga title. Unfortunately, Bayern too strong for us. 83 points for Bayern, 81 points for us. We've separated ourselves from Dortmund and Leipzig very much. So Alexander Isik, the top goal scorer for us in the league, 21 goals for him. Knocked out in the semis of the Champions League. <sighs> Liverpool again. Hey, chat. Uh, Liverpool again. We get. We seem to get all the English teams. We've had Man City a couple of times. We've had Liverpool. We lose 2-1 on aggregate, though. Uh, we lose 2-0 uh, in Anfield. And then Alexander Isaac scores for us in that home leg. But not enough to get the job done, unfortunately. Uh, that is a real, real disappointment to go out. It would have been nice to have an all-German final, wouldn't it? Dortmund versus Hertha, maybe in the final, who knows? But we did manage to secure ourselves a DFB Pokal trophy. Um, I don't know what happened to the rest of the teams in here, but we absolutely annihilate Wolfsburg in the final 5-0. Goal for Illich, two for Soyansu, uh, one for Alexander Isaac, and one for Emre Chan as well. Um, absolutely flattened them. I don't know what happened to Dortmund and Bayern in this competition, but happy to take it away nonetheless. Um, and obviously, in terms of that league, if we expand the stage, is out and let's have a look at the league table 81 points for us uh 77 the season before 66 63 64 yeah by far and away our best season but still not good enough for Bayern in terms of that goal scoring we definitely boosted that up this year uh 86 goals for us there 27 goals conceded as well so we've got to be pretty good in terms of that goal different stakes as well uh 57 there but yeah Bayern just too damn strong if we look at the season overview of the league they've got this guy here Vatina. Uh, I don't know where he's come from Braga and he knows where the goal is. 27 goals for him uh, is a very, very impressive return. Um, but we're def we've definitely moved this save into the right the right realms um, despite not winning that Bundesliga title. Winning the DFB Pokal is a statement of intent what would be going into another season. But I'm going to leave it here. If you want to pick up this save, you can do so via my Discord. Links to that will be at the top of the description. Jump into the Discord and you can take over this save from this point yourself. I make all of my rebuilds available in that Discord channel. And also we've got a fantastic community of over 1,800 people. So come on in, join the community and pick up this save and take it on for yourself and take it to the 
the next level but that is where i'm going to leave things for today guys if you have enjoyed it drop a like on it down below subscribe to the channel if you're picking up the content for the very first time and have a good weekend and i'll see you next weekend for another fm22 rebuild challenge